Good afternoon, Barbara. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, but my name is, is Mike Crawley. I'm a partner in the province office of Citroen Cooperman. Uh, I work on um, the audit side of the house, uh, as well as providing virtual CFO services for clients um, in the commercial and construction industries, uh, with the focus uh, you know, on manufacturers as well. Uh, we're here today with Barbara Jackson, uh, Executive Director of We Make Rhode Island. Uh, Barbara's done tremendous work over the course of her career in service to the manufacturing industry in our state. Uh, that continues today in her current role with We Make Rhode Island, uh, which provides workforce development, uh, job placement, skills certification for job seekers and manufacturers in Rhode Island. Uh, thank you again you know, so much for, for joining us. Uh, okay. Anything else you'd like to add to, uh, to overview uh, We Make Rhode Island? Well, I, th I think you covered the, the big picture, but I would just say if anybody is interested in learning how to work in manufacturing at all different levels, from entry-level positions through management, uh, give us a call. We have classes that start every three weeks. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I see the um, the different classes that you have to offer, you know, coming through. It's it's a great opportunity for those looking to get into manufacturing and, and for manufacturers that, that need the skill set. Yeah, so what, what else could we be talking about uh, but the impact of COVID-19 on your organization? So tell us a little bit about, you know, what it was like and, and what's changed for you. Well, you know, we're manufacturing, so we're an essential workforce, so we never closed. Um, what, we, what we did do, however, is we had to immediately make a, a switch, uh, just like every other training program or school had to, and we had to move from in-person training to online training. And for us, uh, that wasn't quite the stretch that it might have been for some other organizations for two reasons. One, part of my background is in building online learning. So that's not as foreign to me uh, as it might have been to, to some other people. So uh, we had a leg up there. We had all the tools already in hand in my you know bag of tricks to immediately move to online learning. Uh, but it's still, that was an adjustment period, and it's um, very difficult to learn if you're looking at your teacher on a cell phone. So I think, you know, most of the learning that was taking place was taking place on laptops. And uh, many of our students, because the training is free, because they're out of work, they're unemployed, they don't usually have laptops at home, uh, so they had to use their cell phone. So we were lucky enough to have our training optimized for mobile viewing, but it's very hard to retain someone's attention when they're just looking at a cell phone. So that, so that was kind of um, an immediate switch that we had to do. But the other thing that we had to do was we had to find where to get people. Because if you remember, we might have been open, but everybody else was on stay at home orders. Right. So that they, they had to stay at home and look at us on their cell phone if they didn't have a laptop. But we didn't have the ability to do outreach to tell them that we were still in business because all of the outreach organizations were closed down. So for the first 60 days, it was uh, it was a real experience trying to find people who, who wanted to come to training to go to work in manufacturing. But what everyone knew is that somebody somewhere in Rhode Island was making PPE and the wonderful Rhode Islanders really wanted to help out and make PPE. And the employers would say to them, well, you got to go get trained. Where do I go? Go to We Make Rhode Island. So we just kind of had to find each other. Right. And then we could train them enough that they could get a job making uh, PPE, whether that was face shields, face masks, or, uh, or other kinds of things. Uh, and so that's led us to some new programs that we've actually put into place here to get people trained very quickly uh, to work on things like making PPE, making face masks, making um, assembling light switches or other electrical devices that don't require you to actually touch them. So there's a lot of work that's come out of uh, this horrible experience that uh, allows people to use what they learn here doing those things for other kinds of manufacturing jobs with re really great wages. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so would you say the, the, the biggest challenge was, you know, the, the, the pivot to online and all that it entails, which included, uh, you know, optimizing your programs for cell phone viewing uh, and, f and, and facilitating those connections to, to, to find each other? So those would be the biggest yeah. challenges? It was, um, there was a lot of swipe left, swipe right going on almost. But, but yeah, I think that the biggest, uh, the biggest problem was convincing people 
to take training when they really didn't have the ability to leave their home. They weren't sure if there was going to be jobs at the end of training. So, you know, so what the heck were they doing? It's free. But then we had to figure out, are these people who were just kind of entertaining themselves while they were locked up at home? Or did they really want to go to work? Because we can't be wasting taxpayers' money just to be the entertainment instead of, um, you know, listening to the live stream. So, so it was a challenge. But I think the, the other thing that we've learned is we're probably going to do the first week online for quite some time for two reasons. One, it lets us determine whether or not someone's really uh, serious about training. Are they going to show up on time? Are they going to do their homework? Are they going to do all these things? Are, are they, uh, do they also understand the, the germiness of the situation? So before we invite your germs into our factory, let's kind of date for a while online and make sure that, that everything is okay. But th what it does for our students is it allows them to make the determination of whether this is the right fit for them without having to acquire childcare because their kids can be at home. So it's it's actually turned out to be a good learning for us to try to figure out whether or not we're going to keep this one week, the first week out of our, our trainings online. And I think at least for the near future, we are. Great, great. And as uh, you know, as the situation has improved in our state uh, over you know the early part of the summer, have, have you seen um, you know more activity with the training programs, a little more seamless uh, you know con connectivity and, and experience for for the people being trained? Um, I, I think the, the quality of our content online has gotten better. I mean, so we had all these tools, but we had to really fast build the programs and they're just coming out of the, the pipeline now. So, so we were kind of like everybody else just doing PowerPoints with voiceovers for live for a while. But now we've got actual interactive programs. We've got programs that you can take at nine o'clock at night and the teacher doesn't have to be there. So, yeah, you know, That's so we, we've gotten a lot better with that. Um, but the other thing that's happened is that uh, the amount of open jobs in manufacturing is huge, not just because people have been sick and haven't been able to go back to work or had to take care of their, their loved ones or, or their children. The amount of manufacturing that's happening in Rhode Island has exploded. Right. So that's, that's a good problem to have, but now right. we need personnel to, to fill those jobs at a, you know, at a time where Let's remember four months ago, we had zero unemployment just about. Right, right. So, so um, you know, what we're focusing on for the future is helping people to make a decision about whether we're the right place for them to do plan B for their career. So if you're worried that your old job is not the right fit for you anymore because you don't want to work in a bar, you don't want to work in a in a hotel. You don't want to work in a kitchen in a restaurant where it's hot and sweaty and everybody's kind of on top of each other. Well, okay, you can work in manufacturing where we have plenty of space, where we've spaced people out, where we're, um, you know, I can't tell you how many gallons of sanitizer we bought to to make sure that that you know twice a day, it, even in our shop, we break down and deep clean everything. Um, right. So. That that opportunity to think about restarting your career is scary, um, and so we we need to explain to people, which is what we're focused on this summer, that modern manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, is not Lucy and Ethel in the candy factory. It's not the scary stuff that you think of when you see you know meat packing plants where people are just covered in mung. Um, it's not dark and dirty and, and you're going to lose a finger. None of, none of that exists. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. manufacturers are under the microscope in terms of making sure that they're entitled to stay open. Because we were never closed, we sort of bear a larger burden of responsibility to make sure that we're doing things the right way. All of the manufacturers that we work with have taken the what's called the manufacturing pledge, which says that you will at least twice a shift clean, that you will make sure that everybody's wearing masks, that you will sanitize your bathrooms, that you will space people out. And when you walk into a factory t before the COVID came, uh, most factories uh, were well lit, they're, they're climate controlled, they're, they're very clean, they're, they're very lean, so you don't see a lot of junk around because we don't have junk in factories anymore. 
so now that's that's sort of on hyperdrive. And so when yeah. you walk into a factory today, uh, you, you think, geez, I didn't know it was like this. It's, you know, there's carpet on the floor. <laughs> there's, there's things that's that amazing. you would never expected. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, obviously, you know, workforce safety has always been a, a high consideration and, and you know, the, the times that we're in certainly command uh, a higher level of focus on that. Uh, and for years, right, we've heard about uh, the skills gap and, and, and the need to find skilled labor. Uh, we're going to talk a little more about, uh, you know, the specifics in some of the programs and what are some of the skills, uh, you know, aligned with advanced manufacturing techniques that, that folks that, that come to your training programs, you know, can learn. So in the old days, there, there was, you know, the brawny guys that what we would say drove the machines. They literally would have heavy plates of metal that they'd slide around like, like you know, maybe you had in your basement a saw or something that you had in your basement where you had to move these, these big pieces of stock through the manufacturing process. Uh, now the, the, you put the stock into the machine and the machine moves. So there's no more brawn. So that means there's no more sweat there's no more grease and dirt and that kind of stuff because the machine is doing all of that work. So you need this. So you need to know how to tell the machine, to talk to the machine and machine code language, what, what it is that it's supposed to do. And because it's a machine, it has to be, have all this lubrication that goes into it. It has to be climate controlled because we all know computers don't run when they're unhappy. So, so right. they're very happy because they're very expensive machines. So we right. have climate controlled environment now. Um, so what we have to train people for is to speak that language to the machine if they're going to be a machinist. But in the 2011, when I first started training people in manufacturing, there was still a lot of manual machining going on, not so much computer machining. And then when we finally kind of almost everybody moved over to computer machining, it was almost a one for one replacement. Well, now I'm replacing people at three or four people to one ratio. So we don't we still need machinists. Be clear. We still need machinists, mm -hmm. but we need fewer than we needed manual machinists. So the other kinds of skills that have become really important to have are very high end quality technicians, quality inspectors. So people who know how to use these very uh, minute and very precise tools to make sure that the parts are being spit out of the machine. Because if I'm spitting out 100 million scalpel blades a day, we want to make sure that each and every single one of them is precisely correct so right. that no one gets the bad scalpel blade. So uh, the, right. the technology of being a quality inspector requires many more skills than it used to require. We teach people how to do that, how to communicate as a team is not something that was ever really focused on in manufacturing because you were a team of one. Mm -hmm. well, you're a team of many parts. And, and some people are in California and some people are in Mexico and some people are in Europe. So how to have those communication skills are things that we teach. Not the language so much, but the communication skills. Sure. Um, the, other, the other thing that's really important in manufacturing today is just soft skills. And by that we mean, you know, are you going to show up on time? Not almost on time, but like five minutes early at your station is on time. Mm -hmm. Because once we hit that button and everything starts moving through the system and moving through the pipeline, people need to be in place to do their job. And if you're not there, it, it just doesn't work. So we need to know that you're going to show up every day. We need to know that you have your child care and your adult care buttoned up. We need to know that you've got your transportation taken care of. We need to know that you understand five minutes before time at your station is on time. Mm -hmm. That you, um, you have your uh, whole sort of social spirit in the right place. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell you how many times I'm asked by manufacturers to come into the shop and talk to someone just quite doesn't get the social spirit of the mm -hmm. environment that they're working in. So maybe they're um, they're a little too selfish, or they're a little too demanding, or they uh, they have inappropriate not like bad words, but inappropriate messages on their t-shirt that just kind of cause controversy in the workplace. So all of these things are things that we try to weed out or explain to people so that their boss doesn't have to have that conversation with them. Right. And things just flow more smoothly. So we do all of that in week one. We teach you 
all of those social skills, all those soft skills, uh, sometimes you have to come back for another round. Maybe you have to go get a different uh, child care person to watch your kids because the one you have isn't showing up on time. So therefore you can't show up on time. Right. So we make sure all of that is in place. And then we move on to things like, how do you get a job? How do you take an interview? What is the, you know, what we don't want to feed people the right answer, but we want to make sure that they know how to explain their value to an organization because um, not everybody does. Right. It's something that we all struggle with. So we, we get, we get you, we want to get you ready to go to work and that includes getting you a job. So we don't want to just say, here's some skills, good luck. We right. want to say, here's some skills. I've got you an interview with three employers. You should be able to nail at least two out of those three interviews. That's sort of how we approach this. That's tremendous. Uh, um, more than I thought, uh, more than I knew, I should say, uh, you know, about about your programs. You're really you're really covering it all to set someone up for success, you know, to, to enter or, or or begin a new career, you know, in manufacturing. And it's also a, a tremendous help to our manufacturers uh, to not only get the, the technical skills that they need, but the soft skills, you know, that are, that are going to help them uh, be successful in, in this new environment, uh, both as as the industry evolves. Uh, and, ha and has been evolving, uh, you know, over the last few years and into this new, uh, whatever the new post COVID world uh, is to be. So that's, uh, that's amazing. That's, that's, that's really great. Um, so not only uh, did your organization have to deal with uh, the coronavirus and the online pivoting um, and, and reconnecting uh, with uh, the workforce and potential workforce, uh, but you also had something uh, exciting uh, happen uh, along the same time, right? You moved to a new location. Yep. Right. And there's um, uh, there's all the wonderful things that come with that experience in and of itself. Uh, but you're also excited, uh, I believe, about the new location and and the uh, expansion of of the things that you can offer. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? I'd love to talk about that. Yeah, we, we did. It was um, I, I sort of felt like we got the last shutter on the window before the hurricane came to, came ashore. <laughs> Literally, I think the yeah. guys picked up the boxes the day everything got locked down. Uh, but we did. We move, so we have 10,500 square feet of raw manufacturing space that's wow. uh, ready to go, and we're ready to put manufacturing articles there so that we can not only train people in theory how to work in manufacturing, because we have all sorts of computer-based simulations that we do, but we, we didn't used to have 10,500 square feet of manufacturing space. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting um, different bays where we'll train you, we'll train you generally to work in manufacturing. Then we'll sort of s slot you into a particular field of study where you can get hands-on uh, additional training so that you're more valuable to the employer when you go to work for them. And that means more money in your paycheck because they don't have to train you at all now or just very oh. little. So uh, the kinds of training that we will be doing in hands-on are textile and uh, sewing uh, trades. So in Rhode Island, uh, we do an awful lot of uh, actual sewing. You know, it's sewing on unusual fabric. It's a lot of defense sewing. It's not, we're not making dresses in Rhode mm -hmm. Island. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but we are making some pretty interesting things, including PPE. Yeah. So, one of the one of the new training programs that we have is sewing PPE. So wow. we have sewing machines, we have cutting machines, um, we have a whole industrial sewing department and cutting department. We have a department, or we will have a department for advanced assembly. So again, we're not talking about Lucy and Ethel wrapping chocolate candies, cool as that might be, but uh, wire harnessing and other kinds of advanced assembly, which uh, brings in a pretty good paycheck. So there still are jobs out there for people who don't want to take any training at all and just want a pretty easy work day of kind of, you know, doing a basic old fashioned type of assembly. But, you know, that's a very it's, it's paycheck and that's great, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mm -hmm. take any skill. Um, and we want people to be able to to earn a wage that's a little higher than that. So we have a anti-static assembly area. We have clean room assembly area. And you know, part of the deal with working in a clean room, which is a very high paying job, is that you have to get used to wearing the garb that it takes to work in a clean room. Well, 
in today's environment, at least we've got the mask part down, all of us at this right. point. <laughs> but, yep. but we have to get used to the, the other stuff to work in a clean room. And also, you know, when you work in a clean room, life happens, you sneeze. Well, if you sneeze in a clean room, what the heck do you do? Well, we have an answer for that. Mm -hmm. We have a procedure that we teach you. What happens when you, you know, have to have your break and go to the bathroom? How, how do you get back into the clean room? So all of those kinds of things, it sounds like it's basic stuff, but it, you, you, when you spend a week living in that environment, you're much more ready, you're much more valuable to the employer who doesn't have to watch you like a hawk because you're making medical, you're, you're putting medical instruments into sanitary containers um, and processing those containers. So we really uh, take a lot of the stress and strain off of that hire. We're, we're de-risking that hire. Another section that we uh, will have is screen printing. So industrial screen printing, um, I'm looking in my office, I'm seeing clocks, I'm seeing file cabinets with warning labels on it, all of those kinds of um, screen printed industrial work, we're not talking about t-shirts, uh, are things that we would teach people to do. We also have a shipping station that will teach people how to do the standard kind of shipping. Um, and we have a safety section. We've always done safety training, but we've never had as many pieces of safety equipment to train on as we do now. And we will finally, um, hopefully within the year, have our CNC machining section. So we'll have actual CNC machines. The beauty of all of this is not only do people get hands-on training, finally, but we will be producing actual product for revenue streams so that when, um, you know, when our grants run out, which it's someday they will, because uh, right now we have uh, all the training is free that we do. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're fortunate to, to every year be awarded these grants, but sooner right. or later that's go away. So we need to have a way of sustaining ourselves. So we are uh, looking for contracts with people to either make basic PPE for them. We're working on a couple of very interesting uh, museum um, gift shop contracts to do non-PPE work. Uh, we're doing assembly. We'll do everything for assembly for third parties, including putting little bows on cards for Christmas ornaments. So nice. again, if, if we can teach the skills and we can get money to do it, that's great. That's what we'll do. So that the 10,500 square feet has given us a lot of options and a lot of opportunity to support ourselves. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know. Um, you know, manufacturing is such a such a difference maker uh, for our economy, uh, and and with everything that that you're that you're able to offer online and and in in your new space, uh, could be a difference maker to manufacturing. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, anything anything else? Uh, you know, as you as you have a, a, a second and a half, maybe for hindsight, uh, that the COVID experience to date has taught you. You look to the future and say, hey, you know, this is uh, as you mentioned. You know, uh, the additional uh, opportunities you know to offer. Uh, anything else about what uh, what you've learned from COVID uh, that that you're um, looking forward to using in the future? Actually, there is. Um, as I, as I said before, but my background is in building distance learning. That's one of the things that, that I did for many years. And I could never understand why we had to send trainers from wherever the trainer was to the manufacturing plant to teach something that for the most part, not 100%, but for the most part could have been done this way mm -hmm. or with with interactives or with some, some pretty uh, s slick training packages or why we had to take somebody offline and bring them to us. Because 90% of what we're training people in can be done either asynchronously or synchronously if you had the right tools. Right. But what we couldn't do is we couldn't get people to embrace it. And I think there's a there's a cultural bias because the, the, what happened when we brought in CNC machining rather than manual machining mm -hmm. meant that some people lost their jobs because they, they, they weren't able to scale up. And yep. so then when you say to people, well, now we're taking it to the next step and you're gonna take training, which everybody hates because they think it means that they don't know how to do their job. Pe most people hear training as you know a bad thing, not a good thing. So you're gonna give right. them training, which has already got a negative connotation and you're gonna do it on a computer, which meant that their buddy lost his job six years ago. It was, it was a, just a non-starter, but now people have gotten used to it. People, 
want us to do the training this way. So most of the apprenticeship training that we're doing is live, but it's it's this way rather than we're in the classroom with you or in the the office where where you've your boss has gathered a, a group of people together. So I think that what that means is when you when you take the need to have organized training that's organized by the manufacturer out of the equation for mm -hmm. people skilling up and it's up to them to find a training program if they're mid-careerists that works for them to skill up all of a sudden they're in charge of their career the boss isn't in charge of their career so what i think is going to happen is that we will have a lot more mid-careerists who say there's a there's a efficient both in terms of time and maybe even in money because we may not always have a grant for those things but i can afford it right because, you know because it's not one-on-one -on -one anymore i think that that's going to change how quickly we can skill up people in rhode island to do new and exciting things as more things come back on shore to be done right so i think uh, i think it's i think it's a really exciting time yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a change in mindset uh, mm -hmm. from from what uh, some may have thought of, you know, when they thought about manufacturing, or like I said, the, the job experience, the career change experience, um, and the opportunities that are there uh, to fit in 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 someone's life. Uh, you mentioned, you know, making sure childcare is taken care of, adult care is taken care of, um, and 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 maybe the the time of day that uh, you know somebody who's considering a career change, like it, it's it's uh, taking away some of those barriers that may have existed yeah. before. That's. Uh, it's really amazing. It's really fantastic. It's great for it's great for our economy, our workforce, and, and, you know, in our industry. Um, so you know, it, I I certainly learned uh, more about uh, what you do and how you do it, um, and, and the benefits of of all of those things, you know, during this conversation. So I certainly want to thank you for taking the time and uh, and and sharing your uh, your expertise and your energy, uh, you know, with us and 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 telling us all the great things that. Uh, your organization has to offer uh, both what you've done, you know, in the past, how you've pivoted, and and how you're uh, set up to um, to help those that that are ready to embrace, uh, you know, manufacturing as a as a career. Um, so, anything else uh, that you'd like to add, or, or maybe share, you know, where people can find you, how they can get in touch with you? Sure, they can go to wemakeri.com. That's our website. There's um, all sorts of information on that website. Uh, Later on this summer, we actually I do I do have a little piece of news. Uh, we awesome. have the great privilege of having five interns, four of whom are high school students and one of whom is a college student great. who are running around the state taking videos of manufacturing sites. So wow. they will explain what the manufacturer does through interviewing the manufacturer. They'll have videos of their their shop or pictures that we kind of use B-roll for. They'll be interviewing people who have the jobs that are most frequently open. So, you know, everybody starts kind of at a certain level within most manufacturers. So let's tell people and show people what that looks like, because what we want to be able to do is use that to entice people who have to switch careers to see themselves, maybe not as a line cook, but as one of these kind of assembler people or maybe somebody who works in a clean room. It's, it's pretty similar sets of skills that you need in both, but you don't even know what that is. If I said to you the name of some of these jobs, you go, I don't know what that is. Well, yeah. here's the name, this is what it means, this is what it looks like, let's talk to somebody who does it and let's find out what the promotion is that you get after that. So so we're running around doing those interviews all summer long. So um, if you wanna go on our website by probably August, all of those interviews, we hope to have 50 of them up there. Awesome, by then. fantastic. Uh, yeah, look, I look forward to that. So, you know, if you can't get, if if you can't or choose not to, you know, get out there and and, and see what's what's in our backyard in terms of manufacturers, you'll you'll have it all right on your website. Exactly. Uh, so again, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, you know, for more guidance, uh, you know, about uh, uh, on on the accounting side of things, uh, accounting, finance, financial planning. Uh, you know, you can go to our website, citrincoopman.com uh, slash cru. Uh, there are there's a lot of things happening that the, the the new environment is is different for everyone um, and uh, we're happy to, uh, to to work with you we really enjoy working with you um, and uh, and thank you so much again you know for taking the time with us this afternoon oh, my pleasure and Michael you've always been there when I've had questions so I really appreciate the time that you've given me you got it you got it